DDP out of the oil because it contaminated catalytic converters when you had over 200,000 miles on the car. You tell me a car that's still running, that's got 200,000 miles on it, that's got a functional catalytic converter. Next impossible. So that's some of the edits that's coming down from the government. Now, what you have to be careful of is what does zinc DDP do? It acts as a molecular binder. What am I talking about? He's good at this shit, let me tell you. Fingers up in the air. Oil molecules. Oil molecules, okay? We're going to squeeze them. I'm adding zinc DDP to the oil. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a molecular binder in the oil to keep these oil molecules held together. Now I'm putting the high, stop moving your fingers. <laughs> now I'm putting the high PSI loads to the oil molecules. These are just round, you know, round oil spears. And with this molecular binder in there, it keeps them, helps keep them from being squeezed out. That's what zinc DDP does. Zinc DDP is abbreviation for zinc xenophosphate. The correct additive amount that you need is about 11 to 1200 parts per million. Now, most of the oil companies won't tell you what's in their oil anymore. They say it's proprietary, and you'll not get it out of anybody other than possibly mobile. The only oil company that I have dealt with through the years that's been honest with me has been mobile. And you can go into Walmart, and you can buy a five-quart container, or you can buy the quarts individually. And if you get a 5W30, 0W30, 10W40, whatever, and you look at the monkier on the label, and it says high mileage, not high performance, it says high mileage, that tells me that that oil has 11 to 1200 parts per million of zinc DDP. That is the correct amount to protect your engine and your transmission. If you just go buy generic oil from somebody, it's going to have about 200 parts per million. It's not going to protect you from shear. So that same oil that we talked about to go into the transmission can go into your engine. So we're pretty well settled on that. But the next big issue is oil filters. Probably the paramount in oil filter manufacturing is going to be pure layer. These guys set the standard. This is probably the best filter you can buy. Why do I have that big filter in my hand? Because we can fit it to our 2001 PT Cruiser type oiling systems, which also incorporates the SRT4 guys, with a little bit of conversion. The original filter that came with the SRT4, or even the PT Cruiser, was this small filter right here, probably a half a pint. It's very restrictive, and the most important thing that it has in it is a bypass valve. The hell's that? This valve opens up at about 10 psi. What does it look like? There it is on the bottom of the filter. It automatically opens at 10 psi. I don't know a car that idles less than 30 psi. So all of your oil is being bypassed to the tune of about 20 to 30 percent all the time. 20 to 30 percent of your oil is not being filtered. Why do they have the bypass valve in there? When it's cold outside and it's below zero, the oil gets thick, and they have to put a bypass in it so it doesn't blow the filter off. How many times you heard that story up north? You know, the oil got thick, blew the oil filter off. Well, this particular filter, the industry standard is about 10,000 thickness on the can. The pure later is a good, well-made filter. As a bypass valve, and if you look at the paper media, it's very evenly spaced all the way around it. See it? It doesn't have big voids in it. Everybody tries to copy this filter. The Wix is kind of a borderline issue because it has cardboard end caps, and it has two of them, a bypass valve. There's one exception to the rule, and I found these guys quite by accident here a couple of years ago. I went into Walmart, you know, of all places, and I looked at their oil filters, and I'm always looking at oil filters. And I went over and I found a Super Tech, which is their cheap filter for $2.50. And 
And I was racing at the time. I raced these things. I used to race in World Challenge and Sports Car Club of America. And I always looked for a filter that would give me the biggest volume and it would create the least amount of resistance for the oil. Now this happens to be an SDP because this is who they're making for now because they are not. Supertech ceased doing business with Walmart. So I was quite upset not being able to find my filter. And I told Charlie, I said, you're out in the wind. See if you can find me somebody who is now making this filter, who is who at least is selling it. And you were in where? How does how does owner? How does own? He calls me on the phone one Saturday afternoon. And he says, I found your filter in two different places. And he says, I was looking at the filters at AutoZone. And he says, I found an STP filter. And I'm not an STP believer. You know, that's not a good product, but they sell all kinds of stuff now. Anyway, this is made by Champion Industries. It's probably the biggest oil filter manufacturer in the United States. And I did an analysis on this filter about three years ago, four years ago, when SuperTech had it. The can now is 4,000 thick. It's 4,000 thicker than the pure layer to help compensate for not having a bypass valve. There's no bypass valve in this filter. Everything has to go through the paper medium. And how can they get by with that, guys? They get by with it because they've got a very innovative center core. You look at this pure layer, and the center core is basically a round cylindrical tube with holes drilled in it. They can't drill them too close together, they'll destroy the integrity of the tube. So there's a lot of resistance right there where the, where the oil is trying to get through the media in through those holes. So that's why they have to put a bypass on this filter. But on this SuperTech, pass it around. On the SuperTech, they came up with a very ingenious nylon bridge on the inside which almost creates zero resistance so this filter right here does not need a bypass valve so guys you can run this thing here made by made by champion sold through AutoZone it's sold as a uh, as an STP filter the can is 4,000 thicker does not have a bypass valve and it will filter 100% of your oil. Now, how can I get this big filter on anything that's a 2001 PT Cruiser and above? You have to do a little bit of modification. What we did early on, this is where you got the oil pan that kind of looks like, like this. Hold that up. Kind of show it around. From 2001 up, including SRT4, we have this design oil pan. Now this is a second version. The first one that came out came out in 2001, and then sometime around 2004, uh, when the engines were pushed a little bit in horsepower. Go ahead and pass that thing around. Here, I didn't pass this around. You guys look at this. There you go. Pass it around. You can look at this one on the inside, too. There you go. Catch. Anyway, that pan that you see right there is probably the late 2004 design. What's different on it than the one that came out in 2001? They had the pan for just a minute, guys. We were experiencing, and some of you may have experienced it too, some broken G-rotors in the oil pump. How many of you have heard of this propeller that sits in this oil pump breaking? It's called hydrolocking. And what hydrolocking is is where the oil gets suddenly stopped and it backs up into the oil pump and the weakest link would be that G-rotor gear that's going to fracture it. Well, what basically causes it are some shortcomings that maybe we can't call them shortcomings but some improvements that you can make to the pan to possibly eliminate that. Now, what comes off of that pan and mounts the filter in the cooler is this elbow adapter. This is the same from 2001 up to about 03. It's got a part number on the side of it. And this happens to be, I came out here in a light where I can see, a 4779, I'm sorry, a 4777918AC. Just remember AC. This is the one that you do not want. 
This is the one that creates a tremendous amount of flow obstruction and it was redesigned in late 04 to the AD. Now I'm going to pass them around and I want you to just to look. This one here happens to have an ear broke off of it. That's, I did that. When you see this particular design and the way an oil filter works my guys and the way the adapter works, the oil goes into the filter. Of course this is this is closed. This is a return port right in the center where I've got my finger. But the oil comes through this passageway right here. And then it goes into the outer ring and it goes into the filter in these two, four, six holes that are around the outer perimeter. And it goes down past the paper media, absorbed through the paper media, comes back in through the center core. And uh, then it feeds inside the engine. Now, this second generation pan has had a couple modifications done to it to prevent this hydro locking. And what hydro lock is, is when you really buzz the engine, you know, the engine's redline. Most SRT4 is what, 6200? And you modify these things and you guys push it to 6400, 6500. You put cams in it, you take it to 7 grand. Now you're pumping 20 and 30% more oil than what the system was designed to handle. And what happens now is when you get off the throttle, that oil has to back up and go someplace. And what it does, it suddenly stops. And then it goes up and backs up pressure to this impeller. Causes the impeller to fracture. The three things on an engine that what we call parasitic back in the labs is the water pump, the alternator, and the oil pump. Three things. Those are the parasitic things that sit on an engine. What's a parasite? Parasite on our body is something that sucks our blood out. Parasite on the engine is sucks the horsepower away because it's consuming energy to turn it. An alternator will take anywhere from about 6 to 12 horsepower, depending upon what needs to be charged. A water pump can take 4 to 10 horsepower. But an oil pump is the most parasitic. It can take anywhere from 7 to 8 at the minimum all the way up to 22 horsepower, consume that from friction. So anything that we can do to eliminate the resistance or the friction in the oil pump is going to give us free horsepower. I'm going to show you guys today how to get 12 to 15 free horsepower. How much money do most of you spend to get 15 horsepower? That's a set of cams. And you can do it here for probably a little bit of a die grinder, a little bit of engineering. You go buy one of these things from Corey. And basically what we're doing is when you get home, you're going to change the oil. Most of you do it yourself. When you spin the filter off this thing, and of course if it's a turbo now, it's going to have a cooler on it before, before the filter. But look at the part number that's on the side of this thing. And if it ends in AC, you want to get rid of this adapter. And I'm going to pass this thing around, and I'm going to show you why it's so restrictive. Because the oil, anybody here have mechanical engineering or, or Hydraulic degree, any hydraulic training? Any of you had hydraulic classes, in, you know, in tech school or anything like that? They will tell you that every 90 degree bend, 90 degrees, is something you don't want in a hydraulic system because every hydraulic bend loses 10 percent of its pressure in the midst of the bend. Now that's not a cumulative, but it, in the midst of the bend there's a 10% pressure loss. Overall, it probably accumulates to one or two PSI. So think about that for just a minute. If we got 10 bends in an oil system, if we lost 10%, at the end of 10 bends, we'd have zero. That's not quite true. It does come back to some degree. But it will lose one or 2% overall. So if we add that, we've probably lost 10 to 15 PSI of pressure with just a 1 or 2% drop. Now, how can we eliminate some of that pressure drop by improving this 90 degree bend? Look at this early adapter. I'm going to throw it to you. This is the early one. This is the C. <laughs> now, see where the oil goes into the filter? The center? pipe is where the oil goes into the filter. The other hole is where it goes into the filter to filter it. 
See that big 90 degree bend right there? And what's even worse is if you really cut that thing in two, you're going to find there's a reversion problem in there. A reversion problem. And what do I mean by that? It's not a true 90 degree bend. They actually drill it deeper. And then it has to come back about a quarter of an inch and then make the 90 degree bend. So we're even talking worse than a 10% drop. Now, what's the D version? There's the D. Look at this. Now you got to put the two of them together. And just look at the difference. Hold it up alongside of Call of Duty right there. <laughs> see the difference? Yep. In the outer hole, see how they dropped it? And they reduced the resistance right there? See the difference right here? Right here to here. See how this has got a, a better swirl? That's from the C to a D. That right there is worth probably about six horsepower. And that thing is not that expensive. Here's another D. You can pass it around. Pass it around. you got to look at both of them together. Here you go. Grab. Now, if you want to really improve it, a little die grinder. And this is how you make it work. There is a D that's had some die grinder work to it. Compare that to, look at that. That right there is 10 horsepower, guys. Just right there alone. See it? How much? Got to talk to Corey. How much is that thing? $74. That includes the cost of the adapter and all the modifications to it. Now, if you want to add about four or five more horsepower, of course, let's go back to the filters. If you want to reduce some resistance again and you want to go to the big filter, this, this, this filter right here is for an 89 Ford truck. That's what you want to put on there. This is an extra pint bigger. So we have more volume, less resistance. And you can put that filter on there a couple different ways. The easiest way is to go back and buy a second gasket and double gasket it. And this will, this mounts on the elbow. Charlie, come over here and do your handling. Simulate that. That's where the double stack of gaskets. Now you gotta get a bolt that's a little bit longer to compensate for that, that, that extra thickness. What that does now, give me one of those adapters, guys. Who's got one? Give me an adapter. Pass it down here. This man, throw me an adapter. Throw me an adapter. Boy, don't hit that car. Woo! All right. We're going to put the adapter on. Now, what this double gasket does is that it pulls the filter away from the, from the pan body so that the bigger, look at the diameter of this thing. And look at the diameter of this thing. See how much bigger it is in diameter? It pulls it away so that this filter can mount against the back of the pan. Gives it enough clearance back there. Now, if you don't want to run the big filter, you can also run this uh, S16. For you guys that are first gen guys, first geners, uh, this is a filter you can run on that too. This is also an STP. Or you can run this one on this modification. Now, when I told Corey about this and I told Charlie about it, they had a better idea. They said, eh, you know, we don't like this double gasket. Corey had this thing made with the double O-rings and it extends it out a little bit further. This is about a quarter of an inch. That one takes it out about an eighth of an inch. There's a little bit of touch with dual gaskets. With this, there's no touch. And you can put this thing on it. Corey has these available too. This lets you use the big oil filter. And even all the way down to a 2001 PT, and even with a crappy adapter, if you so you know, want to use that particular thing. Now, this is a second gen pan. This is another advantage to go to. Late 04, we went to, and how you can tell the difference, is by looking at the pipe plugs from the passenger side of the motor. If I walked up to this car right here, and I could see through his pant leg and see through that tire, I'd be looking at the pan. And what I'm gonna see is this, right here. The early pans had little 3 8 because it had small passageways. This is a pan you don't want. Go and run the bigger pan with the 3 quarter inch pipe plug. Much bigger passages, much bigger and much less resistant those of you that don't know what this is, who knows what this is? Anybody? Come on, you know what it is. I'll give you a look. What is it? It's an oil filter cutter. What is it? Cutter. Oh, it's an oil filter cutter. Okay, so it's an oil filter cutter. <laughs> you can buy these at Summit or Jegs. 
for about 35 bucks. What I like to do, it's simple. You just put the filter in there like that, you turn the wheel, and you just sit there and you just cut it too. And then you can do an oil filter analysis every time you change your oil. What I like to do is cut the top of the filter off, pull the media out, and then I have about that much oil sitting in the bottom of the pan. Get a flashlight, kind of look down through it, and look for big heavy particulate. I'll tell you if you got bearing problems that are beginning, you know, and you can stop it before it gets bad. Another mod that you can do too is this is the oil pickup neck that mounts on the, on the oil pump. And you have to be careful doing this. You've got to have a carbide cutter again and a drum sander. You enlarge this orifice right here, and this lets more oil go into the oil pump. And this is not hard to do. Just make sure you get in there and clean that screen out after you do that. And that's really almost a square hole, and I've ovaled it out to where I've probably increased 50% volume to go into the oil pump. Just the things that you yourself can do. Any questions on oil leaks? Oh, one more thing, guys. One more thing. This you can go buy at Napa. You can go to Pepoys and you can buy it. It's a 14 millimeter 1.50 thread pitch. This is a drain plug. It's got the magnet in it. You can put this in your transmission, not in the SRT4 transmission, but you can put it in the T350, or you can put this in your engine oil pan. Plus, they're available in oversized if you've got a stripped out one. But it lets you take the drain plug out and see the, the ferrous metal particulate that's on the, that's on the drain plug. That's about three bucks. I think Corey keeps them in stock, too. Any questions, guys? I hit you with a lot.